Here we are in an undisclosed location with our friend in the Nut and Fancy Project, combative artist, Officer Jared. Good to see you as always. Good hey to be man. back on the show. Yeah, we just filmed a couple pieces with swords, katanas. Yes, we did. Very fun. fun. Yeah, it was fun. Yes. You got to work out with those things. That's good. It's a, lot, a good time. They're, they're, they're heavier than the typical knives I'm, I'm used to, to wielding, but um, nothing too bad. And it was yeah, good, good stuff. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I'll break that out into its own video. Stay tuned, stay subbed, you'll see it coming out. We're gonna talk about this right now. OJ is a rep and a consultant for Browning. Yes. True? Exactly. I've, I've, uh, so I've, uh, for a couple of years now, I've had a, 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 a consulting relationship with Browning. I'm a tactical consultant. Um, uh, those of you that are familiar with Browning, yes, it's a Utah company, so we, we, it's, one of the, the, it's one of the prides of, of our state here. Um, and John Browning originally was a military arms manufacturer. The 1911, the Ma Deuce, the 1919, the, the BAR, um, all these weapons. And so um, they segued more into a, a hunting. Most people today know them as hunting and outdoors. In recent years, uh, Browning has looked at, hey, let's, let's, let's go back to our roots. Let's do some tactical stuff. And so they started out with knives, tactical knives, uh, the uh, black label, tactical blades. And uh, last year's when that launch was, did really well. Way, uh, did, did, surpassed their projections and so they this year they came out with tactical clothing pants the whole tactical um, setup for for um, bags and whatnot and and uh, now flashlights are coming out tactical lights so it's becoming a big project the black label project with uh, with Browning okay and so I saw you carrying this huge black case yes and I thought we could cover a lot of ground very quickly with the rep of the company you're gonna show us the Browning knives yeah definitely so okay. here um, you go TM Pierce this will be the review of the Browning knives so this is this is not the full line we've got a few ones that have have come out this is actually one of the more popular ones that goes there I don't have it here I, uh, I, I, it's inside no this one's I don't have this is the trip wire it's got a it's got a it's got a wire barbed wire cutter built oh, into the blade oh, okay. um, but um, someone had to I've got that being TNE'd by a, a military unit right now so um, so I don't have it here it's I, a J Rotsi outfit in Alabama right J R O T C high school like unit that, yeah. military yeah, unit yeah, I'm something kidding. like that um, hey those guys are, those guys are soldiers too they're badass yeah. man so um, but just a, just a few. So this is the first line. Again, we've got some other ones that have just come out for our, our, our summer blast. But these these two sides, I'll just go through quickly. I'll show sure. you some yeah. of the ones that have been some of our biggest sellers in the first year. This has been really popular, um, both with uh, you know, the public and, and, and believe it or not, the special operations community. Uh, a lot of people wanted a hatchet, the, the kind of a tactical tomahawk type thing, without the long handle that makes it um, a little unwieldy, and that's affordable. And um, it comes with a, 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 a Blade Tech uh, made sheath that has a molly attachment so you can put it on your kit. All of our knives actually come with these, um, I'll, just, I'll show you here, these Blade Tech made sheaths with the Tech Lock. Um, I love Blade Tech stuff, it's Great awesome. stuff. You can change the configuration or take it off and put molly attachments and so on and so tech forth. Tech Lock on it. Mm -hmm. Yep. So all of them come with, with, uh, with those um, type style of sheaths. Um, cool. But anyway, this one. Can I feel the weight on that? Yeah, the Shock and Awe is what this one's called. Okay. It's stout. Yeah. It's heavy, but it's going to penetrate like uh, nobody's business, I would think. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So it's, uh, this is like let's say this has been one of our biggest sellers, but we had a hard time actually keeping up with the demand on that one. Do you um, know price points roughly? Um, this, 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 too... No. This one's this one floats around. If I uh, actually, I'm, I'm not going to guess. It's around a hundred dollars. Okay. Maybe, maybe. Made in China or over uh, um, This particular US. one is Taiwanese. Okay. Um, so we've got we've got. Because um, so, we've got a big uh, array of, of, of price fluctuations from our US made, Taiwanese, Chinese, um, Italian. Um, we've got stuff kind of made everywhere. And it reflects in the price, but, but the one thing that doesn't um, change is the quality. We, we do some outstanding quality control no matter where it's made. Cool. Um, so All right, rip on thing. down the line. Okay, so got? real quickly, this is one of our, again, it's one of our US made folders. It's a, it's a, um, a ball bearing assist, so it, it's, it's legal all across the country. There's no actual mechanical assist. It's got a ball bearing system in there. It just makes it so that it opens really smooth. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's it's one like of them. It's got, a little, it's got a little flipper design in there. This is the perfect storm. Okay. Uh, it was a shot oh, show sorry. special last year. Um, did so well that um, it's become a standard part of the of our of our lineup. Cool. Can I feel the weight? Oh, that's light, man. Yeah. Where's your jumping on this thing? <laughs> Nothing fancy with his jumping. Jim. Yeah, that's an aluminum frame, dude. Yeah. It's really light, and it's got a tip down, tip up configuration. Yeah. What's the steel on that? Uh, you know? we've got all different steels on our blades. Um, I don't know what this one is. 154 cm, I think. Okay. Is um, it US made? That this one? is US made. Okay, it's probably yeah. 154 then. Yeah. That's a good US steel. 
Okay, cool. Um, this is one of our, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of the, um, the punch style knife. We, our design is a little different and it's got this little palm filler. So it's not a true T handle, so it doesn't actually flop around in the hand. You've got it in there and it actually sits solid. And um, as, a, as, a, as a young police officer on patrol, I actually carried a T handle punch knife, punch dagger. Um, a, lot of, a lot of guys, like to, officers like to put it behind the magazine pouch or something. It's got that low key handle, so it's not sticking up and punching into you the, the whole time you're working, but it's still an effective backup blade if you, if you need someone trying to grab it. Super light too, yeah. easy to carry. And this again is one of our US made uh, knives. In your line as a SWAT officer, have you ever heard of an officer resorting to an edged weapon as a backup? I have, um, yeah, I have. Um, How did it work out? Um, good on the officer's part. Um, Came as a little bit of a surprise to the bad guy a bit, yeah, didn't it? Yeah, definitely. And, we, and that's something we don't take lightly. You know, in any given year, around one in five officers that are killed with firearms are killed with their own gun. So weapon retention is, is something that we don't take lightly. And, and it's deadly force situation. Someone's trying to take your weapon, so you use all, all measures at your at your disposal. Right. So just so you know, OJ is a um, reserve SWAT officer with the uh, South Salt Lake mm -hmm. Police uh, yeah, Department. I, they did eight years full time with Salt Lake City PD as a mm -hmm. trainer and uh, as traffic a traffic officer. officer, right? Yeah, doing. Uh, you're yeah, doing uh, traffic control, giving out tickets. No, no <laughs> I'm no. kidding. He was on the line the whole time. All right, you're doing a great job. On down the line we go. So this is one of our um, one of our uh, knives that uh, a lot of people like that stiletto, or kind of a throwback to the Fairbanks uh, style, mm -hmm. Fairbairn style um, uh, dagger. Um, not uh, we didn't go with the full seven inch like on a typical uh, Fairbairn design. But um, we went to something that's a little, little lower key. We do actually have a seven inch. Well, I don't have one here for, for people that like that longer blade. But uh, again, very good price point on this particular blade. And, and the uh, the um, uh, G10 comes with uh, very fair baron looking. Yeah, there. comes with the comes with the, okay. the black and the um, black and FDA coyote. handle. Cool. Uh, that handle looks a little bit small. Does it fit you okay? Yeah, yeah, it does. And I, we don't we intentionally did that because, if, like for example, if someone's carrying it as a as a backup weapon, we don't want it to take up too much real estate. Mm -hmm. um, this is not a, a, a a knife. This is not a camping tool. This is a backup weapon. Sure. And so, um, if you, if you want it to just fit somewhere where you have it when you need it, but it's not taking up too much space on your on right your on. kit. Um, this is a this is a, a fighting blade. Um, one of my favorites this is the Pandemonium. Um, I actually took this uh, a bunch of these over to a uh, international knife fighting conference in the Philippines back in March, and and they and they sold like hotcakes. Really popular. Um, very 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 affordable um, and a well designed um, knife. It's got a good cutting edge and a good thrusting edge and it fits well in both the forward and the reverse grip so that's that one there's one of the our, our hot sellers these are all popular the, the uh, with the um the paracord um the um uh, stone cold uh we've got the tanto and a spear point and this little one's um been uh, been popular also and then we've also got them with the full um uh, with the non-paracord design on them we've got some uh, of the the um the point blank this is one of the uh, you know kind of like the the the, the marine corps style um, combat knife. Um, these are all um, uh, US made ones. So we've got the Arbitrator, okay, that's one that uh, I talked about in one of the other little episodes we did. It's one of my favorite ones actually as a fighter because it's just got a really good feel, balance to it, and it gives you a little bit of reach. Good thrusting blade, and I can cut with it also. That's um, one I thought this one was. Good. Okay. Yeah. So we've got, yeah, we've got the turning point, uh, the deterrent rather. Um, we've got the um, Scottish style boot dagger. Um, and this one's been a popular one too because it's not so much a fighter as it is a, a, a kind of a multi-purpose uh, knife that um, uh, it was the Shadow Fax is the name of this one and so it's really you can you can pry with it with some confidence that it's not going to break the blade um, but it's also uh, a, a, it can be used as a, as a fighting knife also so that's some of the ones on that side um, I'm going to move this side here okay believe it or not this has been one of our biggest sellers our throwing knives in fact, if not the biggest seller, so um, well-made throwing knives, and people just like to buy knives to throw. Let's at see what uh, it looks like, just a profile of it. Cool. Uh, they're probably pretty affordable too, right? Very affordable. Um, I don't know the price off the top of my head, but everything in our line, because we do so much, we do mass, mass production with Browning, is uh, very affordable. Our US, from our U.S. to our foreign-made stuff. Now, when you do an entry, your your primary go-to weapon is a throwing knife, correct? Yeah, when I do, yeah. Your, your, your average person, your average a mere mortal may not subgun MP5 or something, something like that. We're kidding, guys. You know that. <laughs> um, so this is this is uh, one of our designs, very popular again. It's kind of throwback to the Karambit style without the ring. Um, we just kind of did a different twist on that as a backup weapon. If I need to get that out in a hurry. Um, Indexing the ring is, is kind of a fine motor skill, so this was designed so that you can actually just sweep into that hook and index it really easy and take the weapon out. So that's why it was designed that way. And it's got the strengths of the of the Karambit style blade. 
Okay, so that's um. Yo, show us a little work with that, dude. So that's, Come on now. I've got my slashing, my slashing, my slashing, my thrusting. Okay, I can thrust, thrust, jab, slash. Okay, with the knife, and I've st still got. It's not so pronounced that I can't still puncture with it. Some Kramit styles are so curved they can't be used as like a, a hammer, uh, kind Agreed. of an ice pick grip um, stabbing tool. It's got a, it's strictly slashing tools. So this is designed so that you can do um, all of the above. That's always, I like uh, Karamets in their specialized yes. purpose, and that is as a backup fighting weapon. They, they have very strong cutting uh, mm -hmm. edges, and they, they don't take a lot of training to be very deadly with. If you're trained with a knife, it's actually, they're actually fairly limiting, because you can, you, with, a, with a, a blade that has two edges, you've got both, so for example, just like a, a, a true dagger. This is a letter opener, by the way. You've got two edges and a good solid puncturing tool and a pommel. So you've got essentially four parts of the weapon of the, of the knife you can use as, as a weapon. Um, Crumbits don't have um, as much parts on them. So if you know how to use a, a knife, um, Crumbits can be fairly limiting. But um, they don't take, like I said, they don't take a lot of training to be very deadly with. And I tell my guys, I cut more tomatoes than I do bad guys. And so having a multi-purpose knife on yeah, me yeah, exactly. works. Yeah, so. They're, they're, they're wicked though, they're deadly effective they for a guy who knows very what he's doing. Effective. Yeah, from, from the, we call them Lugod in the Philippine uh, martial arts. The Karambit is an Indonesian term, it's the same, same life, they use them in both countries. He goes down to the Philippines so, uh, every couple, now and again, right? A couple right? times a year. Yeah. yeah. A couple times a year. Cool. Um, that one there is a, is a, it's, it's, it's a letter opener and it comes in a set. Uh, fortunately, the, the tactical pen that goes with it is not here also. I, I just got back from a training. A tr I'm sure guys will forgive you for that. No I, was, I was actually carrying it on my person uh, as I traveled down to Texas for uh, this course I was teaching last week. And um, just, it's still in my, my traveling kit. And so it I got didn't. confiscated by TSA. No, uh, made it right through. Hey, are you flying armed when you fly? Not on the not on the plane. No, no you, you no, have to have a mission requirement for it, right? Yeah, exactly. You got to you got to have some kind of uh, federal federal deputization in order to be yeah. able to travel uh, armed on a. On, on yeah, a plane. it's a course you take, list you get on. Yeah, a lot of yeah. local cops can get that if they're working with federal agents sure. for some reason. They need to carry. They, they have need a need to carry. To carry. Exactly. Uh, okay, cool. What you got here? This one here has been popular with a lot of the special operations that I'm working with because they like the fact that they, it's got a great sheath. Um, I can sweep through here to index it or use that, that ring, index the ring. If I, for example, it's behind my M4 pouches here. I can index that ring or I can sweep through there. And then it's not, like I said, it's not as limiting as the true Karambit style. I can puncture with it and I can cut with it at the same time and use it as a, you know, if I needed a multi-purpose cutting tool, it's effective for that too. So. Two points. This looks extremely uh, similar to the Gerber profile, which is a good thing. I'm talking blade shape. Okay. It's cool. And then are you ever worried about putting your finger in there? Because now if the guy wrenches that knife out, you, it's, you just it's, lost a it's finger. It's pro and con. Uh, yeah, it's getting getting tied into the weapon. Yeah, um, is, is, with steel, flesh yeah. versus steel yeah. tied in. Tying it into the weapon, it could help you with your retention, but it can also, if, the, if someone's got a hold of that or somehow it got wedged into something, it also can be detrimental to you. Or your if you finger. miss and you strike rock, Yeah. so you're making a swing and you strike rock and that's wrapped around your finger. Just, just saying. Yeah, it's, it's a pro and a con. It's just something you got to kind of yeah. figure out on your own whether you like it or not. Yeah. And some, some people with the karambit techniques will use what they call flailing, where they actually will turn the weapon through cut with or use that as either an impact or if it's got a back edge cut with that mm -hmm. and then flick it back in the hand so it's got you know some functions I'm not a big fan of that stuff myself it's more Hollywood stuff than, than application Roger um, these are these are uh, uh, some of our now these these knives actually come with um, come on their own it's got a glass breaker on there um, this is the checkmate and they also come with a, 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 a there's a, a, a version of it that comes with a, a red um, inert folder exactly the same knife with a aluminum dull blade with holes punched through it so you can buy it as a set and train with the same exact knife that you're actually uh, deploying with or fly on it with TSA uh, you, I don't know what they would say or about fly that, with it with TSA I, I don't yeah test they that. probably would like it yeah but, but it, 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 and uh, so that's that's that one there um, these ones here um, and it comes in the black also okay uh, I think I've got the trainer here somewhere you want me to Pull that out so you can see nah. that. Okay, all right. We, so take we, my word for yeah, it. Yeah, it's a, just a training knife. Yeah, blunt red, red, red G10 with a blunt dull, dull blade. Got it. Um, these are actually. This got a very feel the grip on that. There's a lot of people like that very aggressive yeah, grip on there. Yeah, it's very nice. Uh, it's got jimping on it too. Yeah. So that's nice uh, classic drop point design. This is the turning point. Um, this has been one of our big sellers. Um, all of these, this, these, these ones here, um, kind of uh, uh, different versions, versions of it. That one's the. Um, um, the uh, carbon, carbon fiber, fiber. Um, it's been lasered into the blade as well as on the holder so okay. as, on the, as on the handle so um, and these these two also same essential design with um, one with the carbon fiber design on it so 
very popular. A lot of people like these smaller kind of low-key low knives to carry on the, in their pocket whenever, wherever they go. Um, what knife are you carrying right now? Speaking of the devil. The, I, I, while I was doing our training earlier, I took it out, but it's uh, this one here. What? <laughs> you don't have a knife on your person right now? I've got a whole box of knives on my person Yeah, right but this was in the... And a couple you know, of the room swords. over here. A couple of samurai swords within reach also. But we well, were doing, we do have that. Before, this, before our filming here, I was doing a course for some of the, the, uh, the, the, the um, one of the ODAs here with the, the special forces unit that we're, we're visiting with. And uh, so I took all my live weapons out for that training iteration. Uh -huh. um, but this is the one. That, I like, uh, of all the folding knives you've shown me, I like that that's, one the best. By the way, in case TNT ears are wondering, that's my knife for today. Cold Steel Talwar. Sorry, Browning. Oh, they're, they're, it's they're, a Browning video. I, I, I met um, Lynn. I met Lynn, and uh, uh, they introduced themselves to me and Ron Baliki at the, at the Blade Ooh. Show in Atlanta. And, right uh, they were gentlemen. I, I don't have anything to bad to say about them. Right on, man. Um, okay, cool. Uh, Almost done. What so, do we got over here? Uh, this the pandemonium. This is the pandemonium folder. So it's basically that mm -hmm. same design I showed you right. earlier in a folder. Um, something that's kind of these ones are, again. People that like that very low profile um, pocket folder, but kind of want a want a tactical feel to it. Um, those have been popular. Same, it's, it's, a, it's a Tanto, and a. Uh, and and those a, are made in New Jersey, right? These ones are actually made in China. Um, Taiwan, Old Jersey. Did you Old Jersey? <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> These one again. These ones here, very very popular. It's a, it's a very similar models. It's in a Tanto and a spear point option. Um, Let me check this one out. Yeah. Mm, I kind of like that one. It's got deep grip on it. It's got tip up, tip down. So a lot of these are only tip tip uh, down carry. Yeah, yeah those are designs. very popular. So that's going to be a fast knife. It's yeah. got good grip on it. Worthless jumping, but uh, really light. I would say that's maybe about three point five, maybe three three. It's a light knife. And these last two are two of our two more of our US made ones. Um, again, these are both very popular blades. Um, these look like bring them in the sun, OJ. So this is pretty high quality. This is that same one that I was showing you earlier that you said you liked. Mm -hmm. This is the same one in black tanto. with a tanto. I do like that one. Yeah. And I really like this tanto version too. Yeah. I, that, that's a, if I'm carrying a knife, it's typically either that one or this one. Um, or the one that comes with the trainer. Those this three. is my favorite knife in that case right here. Yep. Hands down. This and thing I've, is sick. And because of that Tanto edge, it's a great you know, multi-purpose tool. You know, you can use it to pry things and whatnot, and it's, it comes in handy. I've, I like that one also. Oh, look at that baby deer over there, dude. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Watch the, seriously. the hands. Just kidding. That's a nice knife, though. I like it. Kind of squared shoulders on that. Yeah. It's not too bad, though. I really like it, though. It's light. That's probably, I don't know. A four two four two for is that a three point five or a four inch blade? Looks like a three um, and a half. I don't really recall really the dynamics. Nice. All right. um, and then that other one that I had there. Oops, that was open. The one that I was. And remind that, that's the name of that again. Um, that's what we're going to sell for you. This one here. This is the perfect storm. Start making more. That's the, a perfect storm browning. This is the one that rocks. And the other one is the perfect storm assist. The one that's in the silver. Okay. Um, and this one, the manual action is really wicked smooth, and it's yeah. aluminum bolster. I usually don't like stainless steel bolsters. They just add unnecessary weight. But this one's really light for the size and strength of the knife. And that was the other US one that I was showing you there. There's your too, liner. So. I guess it's a liner, not frame lock. Go ahead. Yeah. That's the other one that I was just, that was the last one in the, in the box there, and so uh -huh. the Hellfire. So that's a, again, that's been, that's been a great seller. It's hard to really say which ones are, other than I do know that our, our, uh, a few our throwers, our, our, the, the Shock and Awe, our, our, um, our Battle Tomahawk, are, some, are definitely our, our best sellers, but everything is really sold, sold well. So we're, um, you know, Browning, you know, they've got a good uh, reputation to uphold, and, um, and the Roots as a, as, as a company that's really had a vested interest You're in, selling this, bro. in the defense you are selling of it. our great nation, John Browning. God, I need to roll in like uh, the national anthem while you're saying this stuff. <laughs> Let me guess, you're going to be found in a white van down by the mall peddling these knives, making a few bucks on the side. I, and which, Who is that? That's OJ selling his knives. And that's the thing is my relationship with Browning, I don't, I'm not a salesperson, I don't I sell. Know. All I do is um, tactical consulting. So Russ, Russ Comer is the designer, primary designer for okay. Browning's knives. And so I come in and I give him the tactical um, side of what, mm -hmm. what we want, what we need to see, and for whether it's for the civilian, the operator, or the knife fighter. So. That's pretty much a rundown of Browning Tactical Knives by Officer Jared.
uh, known badass in the Nut and Fancy project. We'll just leave it at that. Like but nice guy, real all, nice guy. And an all around nice guy. All around nice guy. By the way, he has a new family, a baby. Just born about six, six, seven weeks ago. So congratulations. Thank you. Yep, another, another. Uh, That's another cool. Girl, you know who so. the dad is, right? I think it's me. Pretty okay, sure. Okay, cool. I'm We're kidding, guys. Lighten up. Thanks, OJ. Yeah. Love meeting you. Uh, definitely. Uh, checking the knives out and stuff. Appreciate it. Out. Nut and Fancy project. Where's that Humvee? That's a cool way to end.